Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. Over the last 13 years, I've bought a lot of gear, some good, some bad, but in today's video, I wanna shine a light on the gear that I bought that made a real difference to my photography. It was the gear that exceeded my expectation and gear that I still use today. Now, this video is not sponsored and I purchased all this gear with my own money. And of course, it's very subjective. We all like different things for different reasons, but I hope you get some value from me sharing the gear that I absolutely love. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments what gear you have bought that's made a difference to you. The first thing I wanna cover, and it's potentially something that we all have, and it's one of the very first investments I ever made, and that was a camera bag. Now, when I started, I used a pretty dodgy old bag, and I didn't really wanna spend good money on a bag. However, in I think 2013, I had the opportunity to go to the sub-Antarctic, and I needed to take a lot of gear with me. I did a lot of research, and the bag that I purchased, and I still have it today, believe it or not, 11 years later, is this Think Tank airport commuter i think it's called i bought this bag i think in 2013 and it is still my daily driver today i have never replaced this bag this bag has come with me everywhere in airplanes out into the bush i've walked around i've got it dirty i have not been easy on it and it still works and i absolutely love it and i've never felt any need to replace this bag which just shows how good it is in my opinion yes there's probably better bags out there and it's not waterproof but it does everything I need. And I've got a lot of questions recently about the new Canon 200-800, people saying, oh, what bag can I buy that can have a camera attached and still fit in there? Well, this one does it. You can fit this lens in this bag, no issue. And the other thing is that it goes in the overhead compartment on an airplane, and when you wear it, it kind of looks like a backpack, and it's quite comfortable, but uh, it's not let me down, and I'll probably continue using it until it falls apart. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about, it's not a camera or a camera bag, it's actually clothing. And I get asked about this all the time. We're obviously in the field and we need some sort of clothing. For me here in Australia, I get down in the dirt quite a bit and I need a jacket that I don't mind getting dirty, that's not gonna be too hot and is just easy to wear. And that jacket, and you would have seen me wear this all the time, is this camo jacket. I wear this every time I go out into the field if I need to lay down in the dirt and the mud. And I get asked, oh, where can I buy this jacket? Well, believe it or not, I bought this oh, more than 10 years ago, similar to the bag, at a local camping and fishing store. It's called BCF here in Australia. It's a no-name brand jacket, and they don't make it anymore. So I apologize, you just can't get this specific jacket anymore, which is a bit of a shame, because it's absolutely perfect. Now, it's been through the wars. I've had to have it mended a few times, because I've got holes in it. It just does the job, and I'll continue wearing this until I can repair it no more. So you definitely need some sort of waterproof jacket, in my opinion. Obviously, I wear rain pants. You would have seen that. It's just easy, makes it easy for me. I don't have to worry about getting dirty. I can just wash them out afterwards. It's no issue. So another piece of clothing that's completely changed how I go out into the field, and I absolutely love it, is the shoes or boots that I wear. Traditionally, I wore lace-up boots, as many of you do, and I was always worried about getting them wet. You know, if you go into a stream or a swamp and they get dirty and you get grass in them. However, for a present a few Christmases ago, I actually got given these muck boots, gum boots, wellies, whatever you want to call them, wherever you are in the world. And uh, I put them on and I thought, wow, these are comfortable. And I haven't taken them off since. <laughs> I have worn these boots nonstop for about three years and they're definitely looking worse for wear and I probably do need to replace them, but they're absolutely brilliant. Like the fact that I don't have to worry about water getting in, I can go through swamps, they're very comfortable for gum boots. So I've gone for quite long hikes. I wouldn't go for really, really long hikes, but not an issue. The grass, I don't have to worry about the grass. And of course I get snake protection or some level of snake protection with these. So um, I wouldn't wear anything else now. I love these boots so much. The only downside of course is in the middle of the summer they just get very, very hot, almost too hot. If you know, don't have a good pair of gum boots, I can definitely recommend these muck boots. They're just wonderful and I use them and I'll continue to use them. Um, just makes it so much easier when you're out. You don't have to worry about getting your feet wet. Um, just a wonderful bit of gear. So the next bit of gear I want to mention made a big difference to me and I absolutely love it. As you know, I go on and on about Canon producing lens feet without Arca Swiss plates and it's what my massive bugbear. You have to put an additional plate on here and screw it on and sometimes they come loose and it's just annoying and often the foot's a little bit too big and sticks out. Thankfully, you can get for some lenses an aftermarket 
lens foot. Okay, so the very first lens foot I ever got was on my Canon 500 f4 that I have here. The traditional or OEM one comes off and is quite large and as mentioned you've got to put a plate on it. So I saw someone else with one of these and I thought oh I'd love to get one of them. They just simply bolt straight onto the lens. I think this is a really right stuff. I'm not sure these are available. I think they could be sold out but there's other brands that are available and it just has this very low profile as you can see here and it's got Arca Swiss built in so it can go directly onto your gimbal or whatever type of ball head that you use and it's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's easy to carry, it's definitely been a worthwhile investment and just makes the lens sit a bit lower and I don't have to worry about that silly plate. So I also got one for my Sony 200-600. to This is a Wimbley foot and I love this Wimbley foot because it's quite big and it again just has that low profile and goes straight onto your gimbal. Some lenses like the 100-500 to you can pick up an aftermarket uh, collar and Arca Swiss plate. I wish this was much longer and it is a little bit stiff to turn. It's definitely not perfect this one but I do prefer it over having to use a lens plate. So definitely do your research. I'll put some links down below for the ones that I have. Um, unfortunately some lenses can't do it. Thankfully some lenses have Arca Swiss built in but it's definitely something to consider. So I often get asked what sort of blind do you use or what sort of hide do you use when you're photographing skittish birds? And when I first started I bought one of those pop-up blinds that are all camo and it's like a tent and that worked really well and I was happy to use that but I found it a bit sort of limiting when you're in the bush. If you're wanting to go around in the bush or take it with you you, there's quite a bit of weight involved and I think I saw my mate Jan actually originally this was a long long time ago he had this bag hide he had this material over the top of him and I thought oh that's a good idea uh, I looked it up and it was quite expensive and I was a little bit reluctant to buy one but I bought one and I have it here this is my bag hide um, and obviously you can fold it down to be much much smaller you know, basically put this over the top of yourself your lens comes out you can see through it and it just works it, brilliantly because it's so light and you can just take it with you and I use this, still use this today, not as often as I used to but if I need to I definitely pull it out and I think only just recently Jan and I were using these for those turquoise parrots. It's just something that we probably every photographer needs. Um, you can either make your own maybe or buy one like this. Uh, the only weakness that I've encountered is when it's windy it tends to blow around and that can obviously the birds can be a bit suspicious of this bag hide blowing in the wind but apart from that definitely a bit of kit that I use all the time and it was a well worthy investment so I'll put a link down below. Now the next bit of kit is the one that I get asked about the most and I've mentioned this so many times uh, if you're new here you're probably wondering what this is but if you're not you'll know exactly what I'm about to show you and this is my skimmer ground pod. What is it? It's a device that allows you to shoot low on the ground. It's a device that lets you mount a gimbal onto here. So it's got a 3.8 bolt right here. You just get your gimbal. I've got the uh, Sure PH10, which is a very low profile gimbal. Obviously put your um, gimbal onto the, your ground pod and it's mounted on like that. You put your lens on here and then you just start shooting and you can push it around. It's hard, hard plastic, so it's light, it's portable, and I have used this again for years and years and years. This is probably one of the most expensive bits of plastic that you'll buy. I was shocked at the price of it, but it is just so useful. Now, if you're handy, you can make your own. Plenty of people have used IKEA frying pans. I think you can get 3D printed versions now online. But at the end of the day, you need something that allows you to get low because having a low angle, as I've said, makes all the difference. The amount of times I've used this and how scratched up this is show is a testament to how often I've used it and how much I like it. And this bit of kit here is integral to my photography. And if you don't have one, you have to get one. All right, well, that leads me on to cameras and lenses that I have loved buying and using and have had no regrets. And again, this is going to be no surprise to you that have followed the channel for some time. When I started, I needed a lens. I started with the 70 to 200 and a two times. It was hopeless. It was soft. I was disappointed. I knew I needed a sharp lens. It came down to the 100 to 400 Canon version one and the 150 to 500 Sigma, the old version and this EF 400 5.6. Obviously I went with this lens and I believe it was the right decision because this lens, I absolutely love it. I've done a review on it, I've gone on and on about it, but it honestly changed my life. It changed my birding forever. I was now able to get sharp, sharp shots and details that I just didn't 
I believe were possible. And I've used this lens so much in the field, it's almost like a, I don't know, a, a friend. I, I, I honestly have that relationship with it that I absolutely love this lens and I will never ever get rid of it. So I think I paid $1,200 for this lens at the time and that was a lot of money. And I did question whether that was a wise investment. But when I reflect on my catalog and have a look how many times I used this lens and the year after I got it, and I couldn't believe it, I used this lens almost 100 times in the field. 100 days I went out in my first year with this lens. That's how addicted I was. That's how much I loved using it and took thousands and thousands of photos. And some of my best ever photos were taken with this lens from my fairy wrens, my splendid fairy wrens, to albatross, to portraits, you name it, this lens took those shots for me. And I couldn't be happier. And I know many of you have this lens. Of course, it misses image stabilization. The minimum focus distance isn't all that good, but it's so light, it's so sharp that I think for a beginner lens, if you can pick this up secondhand for $500, $600, it's definitely a lens that made me happy and I'm sure will make you happy. Now, of course, whilst I was using this lens, I couldn't help but admire the 500 and 600 millimeter big primes from the Super Tallies from Canon. They were well outside my price range. I was never going to afford one of these lenses. And I did actually get the opportunity to try the brand new 500 f4 version 2 from Canon and with the 1DX when it first came out. And I was in absolute heaven using that lens. And I was thinking, oh, I'd just love to have this lens. And I dreamed about it and dreamed about it. But I think it was about 12,000 Australian or around that price brand new and I just thought I can't justify that sort of money. So a couple of years went by and I was still dreaming of this lens when I noticed one pop up for second hand. I almost thought it was a misprint, the price they were asking. So the, the seller was selling it for 7,000 Australian dollars, a Mark II 500mm lens. So I've called them going, is that still for sale? Yeah, I asked him the reason, why are you selling it? And he said, oh, look, it was too short. I bought a 600mm lens. And I thought, oh, how often have you used it? And he said, oh, once or twice. So I'm thinking, this lens is pretty much brand new. I um, mean, he only wants 7,000. So I said, oh, I'd love to come and check it out and uh, get it. And so we met out the back of a McDonald's. <laughs> I was wondering if it was a bit dodgy, whether it had fallen off the back of a truck or something else was going to happen. But true to his word, he's pulled it out. It's all in the box. It's pretty much not used. There's a receipt. And he wanted 7,000. I couldn't believe it. So I uh, had to convince uh, my lovely wife and I ended up buying that lens and it honestly was one of the best investments I have ever made. Now I know 7,000 is a lot of money and it's probably out of reach of most people but when I think about the hours and hours I was spending in the field I knew I was going to use this a lot and I don't have any other expensive hobbies that take up a lot of money so for me I thought it was a good investment. So the crazy thing is I could sell this lens today for what I paid for it 10 years ago. So it's definitely held its value. It's given me years and years of use. I don't use it as much as I used to because I've been using zoom lenses so much. But if I want the best image quality, I'm going to reach for this lens. I put a 1.4 on it. That stays on 95% of the time. 700 millimeters. Absolutely love it. Works well on my uh, R5, etc. So if you're on the fence about getting one of these version 2 600s or 500s, I can categorically say that the image quality is absolutely fantastic. Hasn't let me down and they do hold their value pretty well. Now you do need a zoom and uh, that leads me on to the next lens which sort of changed my birding career, I suppose, was with this Prime I was restricted and I did become a bit pigeonholed in the type of photos I was taking. That was a detailed bird, blurry background, nice light, and I didn't really challenge myself. But things started to change when I went to mirrorless and obviously changed quite a bit when I got the RF 100-500 lens. I now had the flexibility to change my composition and I was able to just walk around with this light lens. And this is honestly one of the best lenses I have purchased. It is a bit short at 500, but the quality and sharpness you get from this lens is almost prime level. And I love this lens. And this honestly has enabled me to change my photography for the better. I love taking silhouettes now. I love taking wide shots, just taking all these different shots that I just never took before. And that's partly because I've got these zoom lenses which enabled me to do it. So if you can have a zoom and a prime, I honestly think that's the way to go. And I can honestly say I have no regrets about buying any of these zoom lenses. And if you're on the fence again, um, definitely think about investing in a quality zoom lens. They're definitely worth it these days. So of course, with all these beautiful lenses, we need cameras to take photos with them. And there's a couple of cameras that changed my life 
life for the better and the very first one was the original Canon 7D. I started with the 40D which I still have here and I think this is a 10 megapixel um, APS-C. When I got the 7D it was 18 megapixels. I think it had 19 autofocus points but it had 8 frames per second and it was almost like a professional level camera at a much lower price. And I absolutely love that camera and together with my 405.6 they were never separated. They were just glued together and I was out in the field every chance I had and I absolutely loved that 7D. For its price and at the time I think it was a really really good camera by Canon. Now I used that 7D for a while I then went on to the 5D series. Loved the 5D3 but the next camera that absolutely changed everything for me was the Canon R5. I honestly believe this is probably one of the best cameras that Canon have ever made. The jump from the 5D4 to the R5 is just enormous. The R5 with its 45 megapixels, it's an incredible autofocus. It's just an all-round beast of a camera. Now I did start on the R6 because I didn't think I could afford this camera, but when I did upgrade to this, I didn't regret it. So it was a lot of money. However, it was just overall an absolutely lovely camera. I've always been jealous of Nikon's big sensors and Sony's. So when I finally got my own big 45 megapixel sensor, I haven't been happier. And I still reach for this today, and I absolutely love this camera. I can't wait for the R5 II that's going to come this year. Benefit of that, of course, is this is going to be much cheaper on the second-hand market. So if you've been holding off, maybe you've got an R7, and you want to pick up a full frame, this might be a good option when the price drops. But Canon, full credit, I can only hope the R5 II is anywhere near as good as this. But overall, an absolutely beautiful camera. I have zero regrets, and I've taken some wonderful images with this camera on a whole range of different lenses, and I just can't speak highly enough. So um, Canon, please, more of these sorts of cameras. So the last thing I want to mention, it's not gear at all, and it's something I have no regrets spending money on, and that is the trips that I've been on with my mates. Going on bird photography trips is just so much fun. Being with like-minded people and just photographing birds all day, every day, I honestly can't think of anything better. And I've got so many wonderful photos and memories from that, that if you ever get the opportunity, I highly encourage you to do it. Often sometimes spending money on trips is almost better than spending it on gear because the memories you get and the photos you get are just so worthwhile. Now I actually do feel sorry for my poor wife because since I started birding, every single holiday that we took had to be somewhere where there were birds. <laughs> and I do feel guilty about that, but but thankfully there's a lot of birds in Australia and a lot of nice places and I'm sure many of you can relate to that. All right, so that brings me to the end of this video. I've really enjoyed covering off on the gear that I absolutely love and I've had no regrets. It honestly has brought me so much joy and I'm just happy to be able to share that with you. I'd love to hear from you what gear brings you joy, what gear has stood the test of time. Let me know what gear is the oldest bit of gear that you have. I'd love to see it in the comments and I'm sure others would like to read it as well. I'd just like to thank all the new members and the existing members. Uh, for those that are joining, I've got a 2024 digital calendar that you can download. You can put it on your um, laptop, your tablet, your iPad. It's got all my photos, my best photos from last year. So that's available to download for all existing members and new members. And of course, give it the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. But until the next one, take care, happy birding, and see you later.